This is the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. I have been testing it for about a month now and rather than doing a boring review in the studio, I thought I'd take it out for a spin in the beautiful Peak District region to test out the new macro capabilities, the brand new one inch sensor and the full variable aperture. So make yourself comfy and enjoy the ride. Hey, what's up everyone? So my name is Seb and if you're new around here, I make videos all about mobile phone photography. Now, this video is a long time coming. I've been wanting to come to this part of the UK for a very long time and I couldn't think of a better place to test out what the Xiaomi 14 Ultra can do. So let's go and explore. So we're currently at the Padley Gorge in the Peak District National Park and wow, what a place. I mean, the weather is not all of that. It's been very unsettled for the last few days. It's been rain on and off, but we shall see what, what happens today. But there's just something so magical about being in the forest, you know, the, the quietness of it all, the sounds of nature, and it just really puts you in the right mindset, especially as a photographer. Right, so I've just found this tree here and it looks absolutely amazing. The, the way the light hits the, uh, the moss and then the, that tree uh, right at the background as well, it, it just looks absolutely perfect. So I'm just going to do a wide angle ISO 100 at the moment and it really doesn't matter on the shutter speed because it's not like the tree is going to move anywhere. So <laughs> I'm just going to be steady and take the shot. Wow, the shot turned out really nice, but once I was taking that photo, I also noticed in the background there's a big mushroom growing on the side of the tree, so I'm just going to try to get down there without breaking myself a leg. And where did I see it? Uh, it's right down there. Oh, oh I don't even know how I'm going to get down there, to be honest. Right, I made it. don't know how, but I did. So let's take a photo of it. Beautiful. So the 14 Ultra hasn't changed much in terms of design since the 13 Ultra. What I really like, what I like that Xiaomi worked on is the weight distribution and it feels so great in the hand and every time you take a picture it feels really balanced and it helps with being steady as well. So I don't know if you guys can see but I just found this branch there. It gives some proper like jungle kind of feel. I really just love the, the way the moss is hanging off the, the side of that dead tree and I'm just going to try to get a shot of it and see what we can get. Right, so I got a couple of shots here. One from the 3.2X telephoto and one from the 5X. I think the 3.2 really gives us some really nice bucket balls at a, at a, in the background. Really a big fan of this one. I put a focus on this branch right in the foreground here and it really adds to the feel of the photo, I think. So as I was walking by, I just found this ancient wall. <laughs> what well, looks ancient to me anyway. It's beautiful though, it's covered in moss. Um, so I'm just gonna try to find a, a little angle there to, to find a, a nice spot to take a photo of and uh, you guys will see it on the screen. It's just crazy that every little turn you can find something amazing. So like this little stream there, it's nothing amazing about it. It just so, looks so nice, especially the moss, like the, the rock that's covered in moss. So let's see if we can do, well, they get close without falling into the stream itself. That would be less than ideal. And if I get close enough, there we are, that'd be nice there. Focus on the actual moss. And take a shot. And let's do a landscape one. There we go. So you really gotta give it to Xiaomi. They've done an amazing job with the camera app. 
a very easy, straightforward, nice, clean UI that allows even casual photographers to get the most out of the, the phone. And when you activate the HDR mode, you end up with some very colorful, bright, detailed photos, especially the highlights and the shadows, very well exposed. So well done, Xiaomi. Right, so it started raining, but it's not too bad so far. Um, it's very manageable. But guys, I just want us to stop here to do a little 360 to show you what we've got to work with it. It's absolutely unreal. The scenery around there is just top notch. Absolutely amazing. It's a bit muddy, but you know, it is what it is. So gonna get go carry on probably down that way and see where it takes us. And because Xiaomi developed this phone in partnership with Leica, they've also included a bunch of filters or looks if you prefer that will really make it easy for especially for newcomers to make the photos have a kind of a look straight out of the camera without having to mess with photoshop or lightroom or anything afterwards straight out camera shots with a beautiful look so when in automatic jpeg mode you get a lot of options in terms of focal length so you have your ultra wide 12mm your main wide 23mm but you also get a sensor crop 2x or 46mm which means that the phone will crop the center part of the sensor which gives you a much clearer result than if you were to traditionally get a digital zoom. Then jumping on the telephoto you get your 3.2x but you also get your periscope 5x zoom which again doubles up as a 10x via sensor crop. Then from there on you can go all the way up to 120x but the result would be pretty poor as you'd expect. Unfortunately those two sensor crop focal lengths are available only in automatic and not in pro manual mode and I really hope that's something that Xiaomi can work on and make it available in a future update. Also another thing that I've noticed whilst using the 14 Ultra is how good of a cohesion there is between all the cameras. Normally on other phones like the Samsung's, the, the Sony phones, when you switch from, let's say, oops, it's a bit jungly around here. <laughs> when you switch from the, the main camera to your telephone, the difference is quite jarring. But here on the 40 North Road, the cohesion is so good. So, so far on this trek, believe it or not, I haven't actually managed to find any like interesting little bugs or little insects. So. I found this little, um, I don't know, tree trunk, really twisted, quite interesting, but it's got a lot of coins, uh, kind of like, um, I don't know, hammered inside the, the actual trunk, which is really interesting. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do a bit of macro on this and see how it turns out. Wow, look at that shot. The amount of detail on the coins there, the, the, the rust as well. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, obviously, I'll put the, the photo on the, on the screen, but wow, what a shot. Right, can we cross without getting wet? One way to find out. What I really love about both the telephoto lenses here is how crisp and how sharp it all is, especially compared next to my old XPO Mark V. And I really think that the 50 megapixel sensors really help here. Now the telephoto lenses give you some amazing like crisp and sharp results and it really does a good job of separating the subject from the background as well. But the best feature has to be the macro. And because of this design, because of the floating lens design, you can get really, really close up to your subject. So now I'm gonna try my best to take some macro shots for you guys. But truth to be told, I was in the forest for the last couple of hours and I haven't really found any like little insects or little creatures worth shooting. So if I find anything on the way to the car, then I'll put a picture on the screen guys. But also what I'll probably do is I'll insert some photos that I've been taking for the last few weeks on the screen. So you get a lot of little nice montage of photos. So if anyone watching knows what this is, um, you'll probably see it in a second when I put it on the screen here, if I can actually get to it. It's like a little 
foam, little bubbles uh, on the branches. So I don't know. Hang on, I'm going to try to take a picture of it and I'll put it on the screen. So yeah, these are the little bubbles, the little foam that I found on the branches. There's literally everywhere around me. So I think, I'm not too sure, but it might be where insects kind of lay their eggs and they put that little foam to protect it. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know. Uh, I'm not too sure, but if you do know the answer, please leave the answer in the comments, please, guys. Right, I can confidently say that rain is on its way. <laughs> Skies are very dark. Right, I'm going to be heading back to the car now because it's going to chuck it down properly in a minute. But I just wanted quickly to round up the, um, the macro abilities of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. It's just insane. Like, not only you can get really close to the subject, but the amount of detail, again, from that lens is just unreal, guys. Compared to even, <laughs> I'm sorry, but even the, the Xperia Mark 6, you know, it's kind of like fuzzy and I don't know, I'm not too sure about the results of the One Mark 6, to be honest. Um, but yet yeah, here, because of that floating lens, it really gives you an amazing result. And if that wasn't enough, you can also shoot in 50 megapixel on the telephoto lenses, meaning that you can go even closer to your subject, which gives you insane amount of details. Right, back at the car. Now time to head off to the next destination. So we just arrived in Bakewell. If you guys are from the UK, you probably know what Bakewell is famous for. If you're not, if you're from the US or anywhere else, basically in the UK, we've got a little sweet pastry, this sweet cake called a cherry Bakewell tart. And rumor has it, we might find it here. So there's another mode that I haven't talked about yet, and that is the portrait mode. And the reason why I haven't is because I normally don't use the portrait mode on any of my phones, but it turns out that the one on this phone is really, really good. So today we're gonna be going around with Nathan, our model. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just gonna find some um, nice spots around in uh, Bakewell to take a few pictures. So when we get in the portrait mode, we're greeted with the main screen. So we've got the 23 mil, 35 mil, 50 mil and 75 mil option. And it has got the bokeh effect already built in. But as soon as you press the shutter button, it will do its computational uh, magic and it will, it will look much better than it actually is on the live preview. Right, so if we compose the shot and we can now take the picture, here we are, bam. And now, as you can see, well, you probably, guys, you'll see on the screen because uh, it's quite sunny. Well, for a change, actually. But, um, yeah, I'll put the, the picture on the screen and you'll see how good of a job it's done. Right, food has been had. Billy's full. So now we're off to the next destination. So for our last stop, I'll take you to Lovesdale Falls. And, you, yeah, you can probably hear it behind me. We are the falls. I don't know if you guys will see them. What I've got in mind is to do some kind of um, long exposure to blow out the walls where the waterfall. Now, to do that sort of shot, the only way you can do that is by switching to pro manual mode. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. Right, so unfortunately, one of the casualties of this trip was my tripod. So, as you can see, all I've got now to play with is this little thing, little tripod. Never mind the people in this photo, they're being a bit silly, to be fair. It is a bit dangerous, so I really hope they don't fall in because they have really good hurt themselves. So, fingers crossed. Anyway, so I've got my phone set in pro manual mode, telephoto zoom, ISO 50, and shutter speed, four seconds. And the reason for that is because I want that milky kind of a looking water and to help with that i've got my variable nd filter which will block the amount of light that goes in so i can have my shutter speed open for a lot longer to create that effect right so as you guys can see we've got a drastic change of location so again i'm doing exactly the same settings here 
four seconds exposure. It was all about kind of like framing and finding the right composition. So you guys will see the final picture on the screen, um, but you'll probably agree with me that a photo is worth a thousand words. So here again, same scenario, uh, long exposure. Well, this one I put to one second uh, because we've got quite a bit of light hitting the waterfall. Make sure you put on the timer as well, very important, because if you press the shutter button, you might uh, introduce a bit of a vibration and it will show on your final picture. So just make sure you put it on a three second timer. And there we go, three, two, one. And would you just look at that? Wow. So now I've just crossed this little log here. I don't know if you guys can see really well because it's getting really dark here. But I crossed this little log. I know it's a bit dodgy, <laughs> but I made it one piece and look at that. So I think it's just going to be the last picture I'm going to take now because it's getting a bit late and we're about an hour and a half away from the hotel. So there we go. Last picture for you guys. One, two, three, bam and it's in the can. So at this stage, you're probably wondering what about the video aspect of it? Because I've only taken photos today, really. But if you rewind this video and start the video from the start, every single shot, pardon me, I'm doing a bit of a climbing now. Every single shot, that was B-roll shot that is, that was taken for this video was taken with the phone. Ooh, look at that view. Awesome. Ooh. Um, yeah, what was that? So yeah, every single bit of B-roll was taken with the main camera using a third party app, which is MC Pro 24 FPS, which is amazing by the way, guys. But yeah, um, so all the B-roll was taken with the phone. All the talking shots as well were taken with the phone. So there's no DSLR or you know any other cam. I've literally just used that. So in a nutshell, the one in sensor with the variable aperture will give you absolutely insane results when it comes to video as well. Admittedly, what I could have done with really was a gimbal, <laughs> but it's just another thing to carry around and potentially lose, like I did with my tripod today. So there you go. <laughs> right, it's kind of getting late. It's been a full on day literally since half eight this morning. So now heading back to the car, heading back to the hotel, and I'll give you my final thoughts just to round up this review of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. <sighs> what a day. <laughs> so just got back to the hotel, but I just wanted to do a quick roundup of um, today's video, basically. So as most of you guys will know, I used to have the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 5 and the Xiaomi 14 Ultra basically improves on every single aspect when it comes to the camera module and the photography aspect. The variable aperture, a one inch sensor on the main camera, the ability to shoot both in 50 megapixel and raw mode at the same time again on the main sensor a stunning macro mode the list just goes on and on and on now is it perfect of course it isn't um, like i said previously no phone is perfect no camera is perfect and the xiaomi 14 ultra is not perfect so now the one thing that i wish xiaomi improves on really is the software especially the ui like why can't i shoot in burst mode in full manual mode why <laughs> or why can't i shoot 50 megapixel raw files on every single lenses. It's just that little things like that seem like major oversights on their part. And I really hope that Xiaomi works on that, probably in future updates or camera app improvements, because it will be a shame otherwise, because the, the, the hardware that we've got in this phone is absolutely amazing. Overall though, for anyone out there who wants what's best, and don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying that the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is the best at every single thing but as a whole as a package 
you really can't beat the 14 Ultra. And I can't recommend it enough, guys. It's just right up there. And it's just an amazing camera that happens to also be a smartphone. Right, that's gonna be it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content shot on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So thanks again for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.